Hello everyone and welcome back to La Vida Football. My name is Luis Laureano. I am a UEFA B licensed coach from California, currently living and coaching in Germany. And today we're going to talk about the running demands with respect to player position. If you guys watch football, you guys will see that players are running a lot. And nowadays there's enough technology to be able to monitor, monitor everything and to see how much a player is running uh, with respect to their position. And if you watch professional matches, as when a player gets substituted out, they even you know, show you these statistics uh, on the screen. We're going to talk about the player positions and we're going to uh, also share some of those uh, statistics with you today. Okay, so we're going to start off with total distance covered. So now in a professional match at the elite level, uh, the center backs are running um, more or less 10 kilometers, usually a little bit less, uh, but they're running the least amount with respect to total distance in a match. Okay, our uh, left and right backs, as well as our strikers, are running something between 10.5 to 11.5 kilometers per match. And then the most running is done by the players in the midfield. Okay, both our center midfielders and our outside midfielders, left and right midfielders here, are running something between 12 to 13 kilometers per match. Okay, so this again is total distance covered so this doesn't mean that you know the midfielders are sprinting the most in a match this just means that uh, if we add the walking the the jogging the low tempo running the high intensity running sprinting in total this is more or less what these players are running okay so now that's only important for you as a coach to consider because this can help us prepare an, an appropriate training program for uh, each individual player uh, with respect to their position. Okay, and that is our focus. Our next point is high, our, our distance covered at high intensity runs. This could be a a situation where you get a ball, uh, a long ball, and you have a duel between the the winger, the, the right attacker, um, the right wing versus our left back. Okay, so then that would be a situation where players would have to run at a, at a high intensity. Okay, so now most of it is uh, essentially done by our uh, wide midfielders. So they are doing um, most of this high intensity running, running anywhere between 900 to 1,050 meters per match. Now, this may not seem like a lot after considering how much a player runs uh, in, um, in total during a match, but um, it is a lot. Yeah, so if you, if you consider all the individual high intensity runs uh, and, and the distances could be, could be different, right? So uh, the first couple runs could be something like 10 meters, maybe 20, 30 meters, or it could be something like 40, 50 meters, right? So these runs add up and they essentially exhaust the player. And, um, but it's important to consider that these runs are uh, essentially the, the difference makers in, in the match, right? So here we have our left and right wingers running the most, and that makes sense because these are the players that have to run back and forth. And in the modern game, our left and right back are also now uh, doing this run as well. Uh, but depending on what type of uh, team and, and the, uh, the quality of the team, you know, the, the running can, can change. Our center midfielders, they, they seem to be, uh, like we mentioned earlier, running the most with respect to the total distance, but they are also running the least amount of sprints, running something between 140 to 170 meters 
per match. And um, these four players here are running the greatest amount with something between three, 260 to 350 meters per match. So now, uh, as you can see, that's actually a, a big difference, right? So these players are tend to be the players that get substituted out uh, during a match just because of the exhaustion that they're um, or the demands of that position. Okay, so as we as we checked, as we noticed earlier, these players are also running the most during a match, and as we can see here, they're they're running the most sprints during a match. So you can see why these are the the, the positions that seem to be always changed towards the end of the match. Um, you know, because these are also players that are attacking and trying to score goals, right? So you don't want in the last 10 minutes of the match to be uh, to be put in a uh, to, to have a player in there that can't make any more sprints for you, okay? Because while this is not too much, 260, 350 meters might not be too much if you're on the track, if you're on a running track and you do one lap at, at um, and with intervals of maybe 50 meters or 100 meters and all full sprints then you will be tired by the end of that. But now you also have to consider all the running that is going in between. Okay, so that is um, something that is important. So all these players, uh, also the attackers are running this amount, okay? Now we're not gonna be talking um, about the sprints here with our defenders, but what is important with our defensive line is that these players are running the most with running backwards or backward okay so these players are spending a lot uh, have the most distance covered running backwards which also makes sense because during a counterattack first you kind of step back and then you try to keep the attacker in front of you and still looking, but still stepping back simultaneously. So then uh, that's also important uh, for your training programs for these particular players, because it is good that they learn how to kind of change direction, learn how to backpedal quickly. So the agility is important for these positions. Um, so now just a few things to consider, yeah? During matches where teams win, so these two players have been uh, have been shown to run something between 10 to 17 percent less during matches where the team has won. And these two players, or the strikers, I should say, have been shown to run 15 to 54 percent more during those exact matches, right? If you're a team with possession or you're a team that is attacking, uh, obviously in a game you have to score goals to win. So if you're scoring goals, then that means that you are playing uh, on, on the offensive side. So then, therefore, your attackers are running more. Therefore, creating more, scoring more goals, and essentially demanding more, okay? But if your team is comfortable, then I guess it could it would make sense why your defenders would be running a little bit less, at least your center backs. So then uh, that's just something to consider. So a few takeaways from today's video is that uh, attackers and the wide midfielders are doing the most sprints or covering the most distance in uh, sprinting. And um, another thing that we can consider is that our midfielders, both our wide and center midfielders, are covering the, the most total distance um, in, a, in a match. Also, it's important to consider that our defensive line or line of defense is spending the most time running backwards. Fourth thing to consider is that our attackers are spending 15 to 54% more running during matches where the team has won and that our center backs are running uh, less, 10 to 17% less running when the team has won. Okay, so now 
Uh, I hope I hope that information helps you and your coaching situation. And um, if you guys have any questions, feel free to comment that in the comment section below. And thank you guys for watching. If you guys are new to the channel, uh, subscribe, hit that like button if you liked the video and if you think it was helpful. Turn on your notifications so that every time I come out with a video, you are the first to know. And um, thank you guys for watching. Yeah, keep supporting my channel and thank you for supporting my channel. I will see you guys next time.